Okay, today I'm going to get into William Sharp's seminal article titled The Arithmetic of Active Management. His research blew up the notion that active management outperforms, that very smart people managing money can, as a group, outperform the index. It was seminal research and was partially responsible for launching the passively managed investment industry or the indexed investment industry. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to selectively highlight some of these things. Today's fad, he's got quotes around this. Today's fad is index funds that track the Standard & Poor's 500. True, the average soundly beat most stock funds over the past decade, but is this an eternal truth or a transitory one? In small stocks especially, you're probably better off with an active manager than buying the market. So these are some quotes that he, he shreds. So let me get, I won't read all of the quotes. Statements such as these are made with alarming frequency by investment professionals. In some cases, subtle and sophisticated reasoning may be involved. More often, the conclusions can only be justified by assuming that the laws of arithmetic have been suspended for the convenience of those who choose to pursue careers as active managers. That's quite a damning statement. So let's get into his proof. If active and passive management styles are defined in sensible ways, it must be the case that, before costs, the return on the average actively managed dollar will equal the return on the average passively managed dollar. See, that's a big statement. That sure shreds, hey, active fund managers, if they're competent, will outperform the market they're invested in. Another example to that is competent managers who are in the S&P 500 market should be able to beat the S&P 500. So he's, he's shredding that statement. After costs, the return on the average actively managed dollar will be less than the return on the average passively managed dollar. Okay, so these assertions, those two assertions, that before cost, the group of active participants, the return to that money averaged actively must equal the return to the money managed passively. And after cost, the return to the money managed actively will underperform the return to the money managed passively. Now let's see what he says here. Of course, certain definitions of key terms are necessary. First, a market must be selected. The stocks in the S&P 500, for example, you could have the market as every single security in the world, regardless of whether it's equity or fixed income and regardless of the country it's in. That's the ultimate market. You can't have a bigger market than that. Okay, so a passive investor always holds every security from the market with each represented in the same manner as in the market. Thus, if security X or if company X represents 3% of the value of all the companies in the market, a passive investor's portfolio will have 3% of its value invested in company X. Equivalently, a passive manager so this is now a manager, not an investor, will hold the same percentage of the total outstanding amount of each security in the market. So a passive manager would have 3% of the, the portfolio that they are managing in security X or company X. The same thing, security X equals company X. So that's the definition of a passive investor. An active investor is one who is not passive. His or her portfolio will differ from that of the passive managers at some or all times. Because active managers usually act on perceptions of mispricing, that's the active manager saying, hey, my research and my intuition suggests that company X will outperform, therefore I'm going to hold more than 3% in company X. 
And because such misperceptions change relatively frequently, such managers tend to trade fairly frequently, hence the term active. So that's where active, the term active comes from. Okay, so here he gets into the meat of it. Over any specified time period, the market return will be a weighted average of the returns on the securities companies within the market using beginning market values as weights. Each passive manager will obtain precisely the market return before costs. There is a little bit of potential slippage. Remember, an index, there is no cost to an index. When you invest money, even if you're a passive manager or, or a passive participant, there is money. There's, there's trading costs, for instance. Back to the article. From this, it follows as night from day that the return on the average actively managed dollar must equal the market return. Okay, so he's saying that each passive investor gets the market return and therefore the group of passive investors average the market return. Nothing revolutionary in that statement. From this, it follows as the night from day that the return on the average actively managed dollar must equal the market return. Why? Because the market return must equal a weighted average of the returns on the passive and active segments of the market. If the first two returns are the same, the third must also. If the market goes up 8%, we know that the group of passive investors get 8%. By definition, we know that to be true. Okay, so the other group must get 8%. There's no way around it. They can't average 9 or 10%. They can't average anything different than 8%. So the passive investor gets 8%. Therefore, that group of money being managed averages 8%. It is as night follows from day. The group of active investors must average 8%. There'll be variance in that group. Some will get 10, some will get 3, but it must average 8%. So that proves assertion number one that the average is the same, the average return will be the same for the active group and the passive group. And the assertion number two is that after cost, the passive group outperforms the active group. Why? It costs more to manage money actively. So the fees are higher for active management. So 8%. If, if, the pa if the cost to each passive participant averages 20 basis points, that group of money grows by 7.8%. If the average cost to the active participant is 1%, for example, the after cost return to that group of money must be 8 minus 1 equals 7. That's it. You know, he, he goes on to say a bit more, but that's the whole thrust of the argument. Now, I want to show you this. Here's the equation. This is just a, an, an equation that states what he's saying. The return equals the return times the percentage of money managed actively plus the return of the percentage of money managed passively. Let's say we know that the market goes up 8%. And let's say we know that 20% of the, the total dollars is managed passively. Okay, from that we know then that 80% is managed actively. So here's the equation, 8% times unknown, we don't know what this group averages, plus 8%, we know this is defined, market return is 8% times 20%. Okay, so this comes to 1.6%. We know for this equation to work that this group must capture 6.4% of the 8% and this group must capture 1.6% of the 8%. They both get 8%. Both groups are averaging 8%. It's just that this is only 20% and that's 80%. Okay, so this equation tells us that the active group must grow their money by 8%. Now, unlike this group where everybody gets 8% pre-cost, not every participant gets 8% pre-cost in the active group, 
but the active group must average 8%. There is no getting around the simple arithmetic. This is pre-cost. It's pretty easy to understand that one, the cost to active management is more expensive than the cost to passive management, and cost isn't the relevant return after cost is the relevant return. So, you know, it's not the 8% you're worried about, it's the after cost rate of return that you are worried about. So let's look at a negative example. Just to drive this home, the market goes down 12%. We know that the passive group each gets 12% and therefore the group average is 12%. Well, we know the market fell 12%. We know that this, that 20% of the money invested in the market fell 12%. What did the other 80% do? It must have fallen by 12%. Some will get negative five, some might even be positive, but some will get negative 20, and in the end, this group must average negative 12% in this example. It is simple. It is so simple, This uh, his research came out in 1991. Nobody talks about this. It is, in, it is not in the investment industry's interest for anyone to know about this. A lot of people do know about this, but it's in no one's interest in that industry for the client to know about this. Okay, so let's sum up. The arithmetic is clear. The group of active participants must underperform the group of passive participants as long as the cost to deliver active management is higher than the cost to deliver passive management. There is no getting around this. Thank you for watching.